One of the many privileges that we have here at GCN as presenters is access to the top pro riders and occasionally go even better and actually get to ride with them. So that's the theme of this week's Off The Back where I reminisce about some of our favourites. So first up, it's back to the 2014 Vuelta a España where Matt got to ride with one of the pre-race favourites and in fact, eventual winner, Alberto Contador, or Bertie as he likes to refer to him now. Now this video was actually where Matt began to forge his reputation for having an inability to clip into his pedals. And in fact, at one point in this video, because of that weakness, he actually gets dropped. Enjoy. Bit of a drag. Still feeling pretty comfortable, but I think I'm going to leave it late for today. Bit of a warm one. Think of Saxo going to be even stronger with a Basso and Peter Sagan coming across. What do you think of that? Must be uh, must be exciting. Sagan and also one guy with experience of Basso. I think is very good for the team. No? Yeah. Yeah. I think with Peter, we will have more options for victory in the different stages. Sure. Not only in the general classification. Better catch up. For sake. Next up, it's me. Now, I've become known for being a bit of a Bradley Wiggins wannabe and a Chris Froome fanboy. And this next video was the start of the latter. So again, at the 2014 Vuelta a España, I got to catch up with Chris Froome plus his Team Sky teammates on the last rest day of the race. And I didn't get dropped, despite Froome being on a proper TT bike, albeit on a rest day, as I said, at, um, at his recovery pace. Anyway, let's take a look. Of course, you the tour is like such a huge objective which you've been thinking of for the 11 months from the preceding one. Yeah. When that's kind of over after five days, how hard is it to sort of pick yourself up and make a new goal like that and work towards it? Yeah, I mean, it, 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 was, it was really tough. I mean, it, initially when it happens, I almost get this feeling that, okay, well, I can just write this season off now. It's, it's a big setback, broken. Broken wrist, broken hand, I'm gonna to have to take some time off now. And even once I get back into it, I was, had to sort of ride around with a splint and stuff. I just, a lot of me thought, well, uh, it's probably even my season done, but then after a week of sort of sitting on my ass at the house, it felt like actually, no, okay. Um, I can still get something out of this season, if it, even if it's to set me up for, for next season. Next up, it's on to the 2015 Tour de France, which started in the Dutch city of Utrecht. Now, many of you will remember that stage four went over some of the cobbles from the famous Paru Bay, so I thought it'd be a good time to catch up one of the favorites for that stage, Sepp van Mark. Now, one thing that I hadn't really taken into consideration was the fact that his team, Lotto Jumbo NL, were based in the center of the city. And that posed, shall we say, a bit of a challenge when it came to interviewing and filming this ride. Nevertheless, I think it's a good video. We have been joined by Mr. Sepp Van Mark, one of the best cobbled classics riders in the world at its time. So, as you expected, Sepp, we don't want to talk to you about Alpe d'Huez. We'd like to talk to you about stage four and the cobbles. What's in that for you? Uh, yeah, for me, it's the most important stage. Uh, there are more stages I would like to be good at and uh, that I would like to get a chance. But for sure, uh, there are cobbles in there and. I'm on my best on the cobble, so uh, hey, that's my main goal. And how much pressure is going to be on you for that stage, not from the team, but from the media? Because, of course, you're from Belgium, the Belgians love the cobbles, and you're one of the riders that's going to have probably a little bit of freedom just there. Yeah, I, um, I think there will be uh, pressure, but and there's not only me, there's, uh, there's Dinkop, there's Christoph, and there's um, Cancellara, and uh, many more cobble, uh, cobble guys, so uh, I don't uh, have the pressure alone. <laughs> Matt, on the other hand, on the very same day, got to catch up with the other Lotto team, Lotto Soudal, and have a chat with their star sprinter, Andre Greifel. Now, they were based out of the city centre, which made the ride a lot easier. So Matt took the opportunity to give Greifel a full-on lead out. Unfortunately, in the process, Matt's calf muscle cramped up quite badly, but there's almost no doubt in my mind that had it not been for that, Greifel would never have won the stage that he did. Well, he, he probably would have done, but it must have helped a bit. So we're midway through the ride, Andre. I did a bit of a sprint there. How did I do? I thought I did okay, actually. 
Can we do it? I'll leave you out, okay? You leave me out. I'll leave you out. Well, there we go. But I think this lad's got a very bright future. Me for one, I'm done now. See you later. Okay, these final two videos are also with Matt, who I'm quickly realizing seems to have the privilege of riding with pros far more than the rest of us. Something I think I might well have to change in 2016. This one dates back to last year's 2015 Vuelta a España, where in the absence of Alberto Constable, or Bertie again, as he calls him, uh, Matt chose to ride with Peter Sagan, who I think you will agree is a worthy replacement. Oh, and in fact, he had a bit of a competition. Who could do the highest bunny hop? Can you guess who won? Yeah, yeah, so can I. The bunny hop. Ah, he's harder than the grass. Ah, here we go. You got air on your knee. You got trouble. You got me. You got pitcher on your side. Keep me needed. Keep me high. Okay, we shall finish with this one, which I believe is the oldest and the first ride with a pro that we ever did. Again with Matt, as I said before. This time he got to ride with Team Tinkoff Saxo at the Giro d'Italia on the rest day and specifically catch up with Nicholas Roach. So Nicholas, we're on a rest day ride. Lots of people think that on a rest day in a Grand Tour, riders just sit in bed with their feet up. Why is it important for you guys to ride? Well, it's actually uh, flat out at the moment. <laughs> It doesn't look much like a rest. <laughs> but, uh, so more seriously, uh, you know when you're when you're going on, your your body is just yet to compare to some kind of machine, and uh, every day it's used to doing the same thing. And uh, if you suddenly stop, it just doesn't understand why. You can feel blocked. I, I use the word blocked. You kind of feel blocked up, don't you? It's, uh, yeah. it's a strange. Blocked up, bloated, and. You know, I just feel that uh, you probably need to do some, some effort before you start feeling better. Well, that brings this week's Off the Back to a close, but fingers crossed there will be plenty more rides with the pros in 2016. Who knows, I might even get to ride with Sir Bradley Wiggins himself and get some tips on how to look a little bit more like it. Before you go though, make sure you check out some other content. Firstly, just up there, talking of Wiggo, we discuss how exactly he went about breaking the world hour record early in 2015. And down there, Matt is at the Vuelta a España, measuring who has the biggest biceps in the Vuelta Peloton. No, really, he honestly does. Who's got the biggest guns? Oh, and don't forget to subscribe to GCN as well. You can do that by clicking on this little box in the middle over here.